Hey, welcome back to the channel. Got a little something on the bench for you here. So this is the Radio Master Zorro with the 4-in-1 internal module. And today in this video, we're going to flash firmware to this RXSR. Um, I'm going to make a playlist of everything I'm doing with the Zorro. And I have some unboxing of the AGO on gimbals, the radio, of course, and a carrying case. And soon I'll have the external ELRS. Uh, Slim Pro to do as well. Uh, but for today, we're going to go ahead and connect this RXSR up to our radio. And we're going to flash the correct firmware to this RXSR. And then we're going to jump over to my ultimate charging station. And I have a way to check the uh, SBUS output of the receiver. In your case, you would have it in your quadcopter. Uh, so that's what this video is about. And like I said, I'll get everything that I'm doing with the Zorro in a playlist and things are coming. So make sure you're subscribed and uh, hit that notification bell. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do, we have our RXSR, let's say brand new RXSR. We have no idea what firmware it's, you know, come with. Uh, maybe it came with the V2, maybe it came with Access. Uh, we need the older firmware on here. Uh, I like to keep everything uniform, so I run the historical firmware, and it's actually still on FR Sky's website. Um, so that information needs to be downloaded to the SD card. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, first, we need to go to the radio. We need to make sure that we're getting the right pins. So we're going to go ahead and turn around to the back here. And as you can see, we have uh, several pins for the external module. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, some foam on the back here real quick so I can lay this down. All right, so just grabbing a chunk of foam here we'll go ahead and lay this down and then I just want to uh, power this radio up after I find the ground so I'm gonna grab my trusty multimeter here and we'll go ahead and get into a continuity setting if you don't have a, a multimeter I would suggest getting one uh, just as you go along in the hobby you're gonna want to do a little bit more with it let me see if I could get that screen light up for you uh, so when you touch the leaves together we get continuity full continuity should be zeros so that's a dead short, all zeros. There we go. Uh, come over here to the bay. We have positive on this side and negative on this side. So we're just going to grab our negative on the uh, battery terminal. All the negatives should be common. So we don't have anything here. So we have, as you can see, we have full, pretty much, you know, 0 0.01, 0, 0, 0. We have a full short. So this is ground. And this pin does nothing. If you have a fluke meter or something, you might get a little bit of a difference here. So pin, the center pin, this is the right side. If you're holding the controller here, it's the left side. Uh, all the way over to the throttle side in my case. So straight back from here, we have number two pin is ground. Now, we'll go ahead and power up the radio. To now I, I don't have any uh, 18 350s in here I'm running this uh, off of a, a 2s 5200 pack and that's what I'm planning on doing I run my goggles and the radio off of that external cable nice strain relief that uh, you can purchase with the cable it's only like three or four bucks uh, totally worth it so now that we're powered up uh, we have to make sure that our external module is powering up so what we need to do is we need to return out of here. We need to go to our models and then uh, find a model. If you, It doesn't matter which one it is right now. I'll just go to the Zorro and then we'll just page over and then scroll up. I'll turn my screen there so you can see it. And then we'll just make sure that the external module is on. So you can see here it says external RF multi. FR Sky DA uh, D16. Uh, so that means the external module is uh, powered on. If this external module, see how the internal is off? I'm trying not to lose you, but I want to. I want to kind of go through this as quick as I can. But the internal module is turned off. The external module is turned on because we have our multi-protocol module 
uh, initiated, even though there's no module in there. So you're, you're not going to be able to bind or you're not going to be able to do anything. The only thing we're trying to do is power up that external, uh, that external bay here. Okay, so that's what we've done by initiating multi and just choosing some types and subtypes. Uh, it'll initiate that. So once that's done, we can just return out and then we know that, you know, this made up model doesn't matter. That's the only thing we need to do is turn on that external. Let's see if I can get this so I'm not smushing my gimbals around. Okay. So you can see this pretty good. So now we'll go to our multimeter and we'll go to DC voltage. So that's your V with the straight line. And then we'll go ahead and grab a hold of our ground here. We know that this is ground pin. Now you want to be careful now that this is powered up. But you got your center pin here and there's nothing. We go all the way over here. Now you can see that there's point. Looks like uh, 100, 140, 137 millivolts. So we are getting a small amount of voltage coming out of here. So our logic on our board is sending voltage to this pin. So that gives me a good idea that's going to be our S port pin. And then this center pin right here. So 7.15 volts. All right. So we know that the third pin over is our positive pin. Okay. So the first pin is going to be our S port. The second pin is going to be our ground, and the third pin over is going to be our uh, VBAT. Now, here's the one thing you want to keep in mind. The RXSR, per the instructions here from, from uh, FR Sky, it says it can handle operating voltage range of 3.5 to 10 volts. So we're safe to run uh, VBAT. So if this LiPo here is putting out 8.4 volts, we're going to be just fine because it can handle up to 10. But you need to be, you know, keeping in mind that that pin is not a 5 volt pin like other uh, radios that I've had on the channel. This is going to be basically lipo voltage coming out. So you want to be mindful of that. Uh, so looking at our pin out here, we have ground, 5 volt, and S port. We're not dealing with S bus, not yet. We need to make sure that we have our S port uh, pin our ground and our 5 volt because the S port is what we use to firmware update our XSRs and XM pluses and other FR Sky uh, garbage. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way here. So you're going to need a servo cable. One should have come with the RXSR. So you should have a servo uh, end here and you should have a uh, SH. Um, JST SH 1.25 connector on the end of here. Okay, and then we're going to plug this into our RXSR. Now, as you can see here, let me zoom in on it for you. All right, so we're looking at our RXSR, and we can see we have our binding pad right here, our two antennas on the back, and then our connector. I just want to make sure this is plugged in all the way. So we should have ground. 5 volt and S port. Okay, the next, let me see if I could tilt that. You see the next two holes? Um, I do have a video where I ran a redundant uh, system. So I had the RXSR and I had a backup XM Plus. Uh, so I do have a video on if you're wanting to do like a redundant uh, receiver, which I did in my rescue drone. And then right here in this uh, slot will be your uh, S bus. So we're in the S port right here, 5 volt and ground, or in our case, we're going to put 7.2 to it, uh, and that's fine. Now, make sure that that is connected correctly, okay? And then you look over here, and if you can see, I've put a little bit of uh, carving in here, so I know that that's my VBAT pin, and this is my ground pin, and this is my S port pin. So with the servo... We want to put our servo lead on here. And I'll tell you right now, these these little pins are not long enough. Um, this is this is not, in my mind, this just pushing this in here is not quite secure enough. So what I like to do is just grab a real small flat blade screwdriver. And I'm going to make sure that the power on the radio is off. Okay, so we have no, no power going to that. 
and I'm just going to take and I'm going to push these pins down in here. See, I'm just kind of grabbing the top of these pins and pushing them down. That that one and a half, two millimeters is enough to get a good secure connection. You can see that pretty well. All right, so we'll go ahead and power the radio back up. Welcome to HTX. All right. Warning. Throttle warning. Pull that down. Okay. Now see, once we once we eliminated the fail safe, uh, you can see that RXSR has powered up, and that's fine. And you can see that it's a solid blue light. That solid blue light means that it's in S bus mode. If there's no solid blue light, then you've held the bind button down too long and you put it into PPM mode or C C PPM mode. Uh, in our case, we want to make sure S bus is functional uh, for later use. So we want to hold that bind button down and then let go like 10 seconds, let go of it. And then we'll get the solid blue light. Uh, you'll see that the red light is blinking. So that means it's ready, uh, basically on standby. It's not binding, but it's, it's not seeing the controller. It's in a full fail safe, but we don't care. We're not interested in all that. And, uh, turn off the radio. All right, and we need to put a USB port in here or we need to take the SD card out. So if you put a type uh, C USB-C connector and you can use uh, the mass storage or you can just pull this SD card out and that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this out and put it into the computer and get the correct firmware file. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and get that. All right, so we're going to go over to the FR Sky website and we're going to pull up the RXSR and we're going to scroll down to download. I'm going to click on the download, go to download page. And now in here, we'll see, we'll see uh, the manual for different things and then we'll see access. This is the firmware that will not work with the multi protocol. This is a proprietary software. This is FR Sky only, basically. So anyone that, that used FR Sky, including myself, um, just everything I own has FR Sky in it. Um, if you don't update your radio to access, you can't use their stuff. So that means that the radio that you own, if you update it to the newest firmware, then you've just eliminated the backward compatibility with other things like the XM receiver, which I have a couple of uh, D8 receivers in built in SPIs, things of that nature. So this is a real bummer. Um, now we're, we're dealing with ACCST. OK, I'm not dealing with access in this. Uh, so if you have an access radio, uh, I'm sorry. So ACCST D16 firmware is, is where we need to be, okay? But here's that V2 firmware, okay? The V2 firmware is not what we want. This is, this is them making the switch, if you will. This has really confused a lot of people, and it's very frustrating, and that's what prompted to make that other video. We're going to go here to this download section. All right, so in this folder, we have a zip file. Okay, so I'm going to unpack that real quick. All right, so I just made a folder on the desktop called FR Sky uh, Garbage Firmware because that's pretty much what it is. And I'm just going to unpack this zip folder in here. Okay. All right, so we unpacked it. And so here's our zip folder and here's the unpacked folder. So go ahead and open it. So we're going to be dealing with the FCC. And this is ACCST, and the other ones in here are F port, and so you have FCC and LBT F port, and I'm not going to mess with the F port. So we're going to go ahead and choose this one. So now we need our our SD card. So this is the SD card that I've taken out of the radio, and here in firmware folder we want to drop. See where I already have XM Plus. That's the firmware for uh, the XM plus so I'm going to grab this one here and I'm going to drop it into our SD card okay so now we have both 
uh, receivers, XM Plus and the RXSR, ready to go for our Radio Master. So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to remove the SD card from the computer and jump back to the bench. All right, now we have our SD card put back into our radio, and all the information is in our firmware fo uh, folder. So we'll go ahead and turn the radio back on. All right, we won't want to make sure that we didn't jiggle our wires loose, make sure they're nice and snug on there. So we have our, our LEDs are lit up. Now we're going to go to system and we're going to page over one time and then we'll go down to firmware, click on firmware, and then we'll scroll down to the correct file that we downloaded. And that's RXSR. For me, I'm in the United States, so it's FCC. If you're in uh, the EU, you're going to use LBT and then ACCST. Okay, not access. If that you can't use access on this 4-in-1 module. That access is a proprietary firmware for FR Sky, and that's why everybody's in the community has kind of had, you know, you'll hear all kinds of things about FR Sky this and FR Sky that. Uh, it, basically, when they went proprietary, they left all of us uh, old timers in the dirt, okay? So, uh, one one nine one 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 two. so that's the firmware that I have. I'm going to go ahead and hold down on the scroll wheel and make sure that you scroll over to flash external module do not flash the internal module you're gonna wreck it so make sure you flash external module and then once you've chosen that you're gonna go ahead and hold down on the uh, wheel and let go so you will hold it down for just a few seconds and now you can see the RXSR you can see the blinking lights so it's writing that firmware onto the RXSR. Um, I, I'm not going to edit. I know this might take a second, so I'll just kind of leave this screen alone. I want I want you to see how long it takes me. In case you have issues, you know that you know it didn't take that long. The other thing is, don't touch anything. Don't mess with it. <laughs> and the other thing is, is make sure that your lipo. Uh, or your power supply or whatever you're powering your radio with make sure that it's nice and charged up You do not want this Radio to shut off in the middle of a firmware update uh, Bricking one of these is not very fun So as you can see it's taken some time so the little memory chip right right here on the RXSR is collecting all that information and rewriting everything so a lot of times you get the RXSR and it, it has the V2 firmware on it um, I'm pretty sure this has a protocol module to run the V2 it's not what I'm used to and not what I do because uh, some of the other radios that I have don't have the firmware to run that so I just run the older version never had any issues so uh, but yeah if you're if you're more savvy than me in comments you know by all means mention it and then of course access firmware is not available you can't use it with this setup so it's going to be really cool because i'm going to get the uh slim pro uh express lrs happy model slim pro uh putting into the back of this thing so i'll be able to run every single thing that i have i mean even my old 2012 hubs and stuff it's going to be uh very nice so, so far I like the feel of the radio. I haven't had a lot of time flying it or anything, but um, I need to get some of this other stuff updated and moving along here. Did I talk long enough? All right, so obviously that was kind of painful. It says flash successful, okay. So we're gonna hit okay. And then we're gonna return a couple times. And then we're gonna go ahead and power the radio off. And then the RXSR is going to power off as well. And we're done with the flashing. So we can take our connector off of here. And we can put our uh, battery cap and all our other caps on. Now this firmware flashing cable is not correct uh, for you to put this into your quadcopter. So like if you want to cut these wires and put it in, you have to change this over uh, to a different one. Or you need to add a wire to it. But if you're using the uh, RXSR uh, cable that came with it, it should have plenty of wires. You get rid of the white one if you're not going to do redundant. And then this one would go to your uh, a different T-pad. 
It's a TX pad for your smart port telemetry and then your S-Bus will come out of there. So if you put this into your quadcopter, that's how you're gonna power it up. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and get this bound up and uh, make sure that we got stick movements. Move this out of the way here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and hold down on the bind button. And then we'll go ahead and come over here to bind, click down one time. We're gonna go telemetry on for one through eight. That's what we want to go with. I'm holding down the bind button. Go ahead and power this up and then let go. And you can see here that our LED, the green LED is solid, the blue LED is solid, and the red LED is flashing rapidly. If you can see that or not. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and power off the RXSR. Now, here's the thing. I'm filming this for you, so these are like really close together, but having these really close together is not a good idea. Like you might say, oh, I don't get any stick movements in beta flight. Well, because you're too close, this uh, receiver can just get over overwhelmed and uh, not have any movement. And also, you can also have issues with binding if they're too close together. So it's better to have the radio further away but obviously I'm trying to film this for you so we're gonna power this back up and then as you can see this uh, green light here is solid I know in the video my uh, refresh rate on the video here I think 60 Hertz uh, is kind of picking it up and it makes it look like it's blinking a little bit but it's not it's totally solid and so is the blue the red has gone away so we can go over here to our radio and we can page back so just page, uh, oops, page back to telemetry, and then we scroll down and discover new sensors, and then stop, and then you can see here that we have RXSR, uh, or RSSI. I cover up the antennas with my hands. You can see that the RSS, uh, RSSI is moving around, so we know that we're bound up good. Um, now in your quadcopter, I'm going to go ahead and shut all this off here. And then I'll go ahead and uh, fire up channel one on the power on the ultimate charging station here. Got some props off colors going on. Let me turn the LEDs off. So you can see what we're doing here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and page over to measure. We're going to click on that. We're going to page over here to S bus. And before I do anything, I want to go ahead and plug this in. Now, if you want, you could, if you have the ability to use one of these, or if you get one, you can hold the bind button down, initiate the bind on the uh, radio, and plug this in, and then let go of bind, because this will power up your RXSR, uh, so you can bind it doing this as well. So that cheap uh, bench power supply is pretty awesome. I really like to bind my RXSRs before I put them in the quadcopter. It just makes it so much easier. Uh, but you can totally do it in your quadcopter as well. You just have to hold down the bind button um, or you go to beta flight version that you can go into CLI and do the binding as well. But let's go ahead and plug in our RXSR. We're already bound up. We did that on the bench earlier. So plug this dude in. We'll see the power comes on and then we have our green solid and our blue solid so we know we're bound up. I have a discharge fan coming out of the ultimate charging station. This is a 1200 watt system. Uh, I could charge 40 lipos at once. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and click on S bus to measure. Now here's the thing, they're too close together. Like I was saying earlier, there's no there's no stick movements here because these this RXSR is getting overwhelmed. So I'm just gonna cover up the antennas. And now here we have our throttle, our yaw, pitch and roll. Go uh, all the way into our upper limits and all the way down into our lower limits and then I also added a switch already so we can go um, switch down you can see that's in the lowest spot and then switch all the way so I think we're done here tried to explain what I meant about no stick movement when they're too close together obviously this is going to be a lot more sensitive um, if you need help with model setup and stuff we can probably do a video on that but uh, let's go ahead and jump back over to the bench. Actually, you know what? I think we're done. I think that's really it. Uh, if you have any uh, 
if you have any questions about this process, you know, let me know. I'll go ahead and unplug that. Go ahead and shut this off. We can finish setting up our model and get that into a quadcopter, if not already, and, and get into beta flight, make all our changes, set up all our modes tabs. Excellent. So if you have any questions uh, about the RXSR firmware update, that sort of thing, let me know in comments. And, you know, if, if this... Let me shut this off. That fan is loud, isn't it? That's a, I, got a, I got a fan coming in and a, a fan coming out. So there's quite an airflow going through that dude. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. So yeah, just let me know in comments if you have any uh, questions about that. And, you know, I hope this video is informative. Uh, hopefully you got something out of it or, hey, you know, it's entertaining. So, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you hated it. <laughs> Man, you give me a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze.